Hey guys, Bowser the Carrigan here. Today I'm here to give you my review of the Tales of Zestiria anime special, Tales of Zestiria, Dawn of the Monk. So right off the bat, first thing I need to know is that right now there's no universal terminology for all the stuff in Tales of Zestiria. So some of the words that I might be using may be different from what you know, cause we have the Japanese words, the English words, and then the words of the subtitles that people added, so yeah. But you should still know what I'm talking about. And with that little tidbit out of the way, Here's my thoughts. First thing, the animation. The animation was on point, it was beautiful, and I'm really glad that the animation in the in-game cutscenes is gonna look like this. Second thing I wanna talk about is the main character, Slain. I like Slain. He's really clever and resourceful. He's not whiny like Asbel, and he's not stupid like Lloyd. No disrespect to Lloyd, I like Lloyd, but just saying. But yeah, he seems like a main character that I'm really going to like, and I'm glad they made him likable. And he seems really interesting because he's a human, but he's never met another human until Alicia. So yeah, that's pretty interesting. I wonder how that's going to play into his interactions with the other people in the world. But I'll get back to Slain in a bit. Right now, I want to talk about the Shepherd. The Shepherd reminds me of the Avatar from Avatar The Last Airbender. Like they're the chosen one who's kind of a bridge between all the species in the worlds. But what interested me was that apparently the shepherd disappears in times of peace. So I don't know if they have to offer their lives or something or whatever. But I'm sure that'll get explained later in the game. And of course we as the viewers know that Slain is the shepherd. No big surprise there. And now let's talk about the Seraphs. The Seraphs are the people that humans can't see, they're invisible to them. And I gotta know one thing, one thing that was weighing on my mind this entire episode. Okay, humans can't see Seraphs. What if a Seraph was to like lift a plate off the ground and start eating? Would the human not see the plate? Would the plate just float to them or what? Cause to me that was like... Slain could have just said, oh, I live with the Seraphs. Alicia would have been like, ha ha ha, yeah, right. And then Slain would have said, okay, how is this um, plate floating or whatever? Where is this water going? You know, like someone drinking the water and it disappears. But I don't know, that was just weighing on my mind. Maybe I'm thinking too much about that. I would like to see that get addressed at some point in the game. And what really interested me between the Seraphs and the humans is I wonder what their relationship is like in the rest of the world. Because it's hinted at that humans don't believe the Seraphs exist and that Seraphs don't trust humans. And the humans can't see the Seraphs, so I doubt they're at war because you can't fight something invisible unless they pull something where there's some big event in the game that makes it so everyone can see the Seraphs and then we have a war or just mass panic. I'm pretty sure that's going to happen either at some point in the game or maybe the ending where you know they all have to see each other then they're forced to coexist and then we would have a sequel on our hands. Now probably the final thing I want to talk about, the Hiumas I think is what they're called. These are basically the monsters that come around when uh, it was kind of weird how they stated they appear. It's like they're bad omens. Maybe it's because when humans come around Seros, these guys appear. I don't know. It was really weird the way they worded it. And it seems they can either be monsters or they can be sentient like people. As in that cannibal guy who I, I need to mention this. He freaking ate that dude. I mean, he was snacking on him at first. Then he was losing in that fight with Slain and Mikello. So he went over to the guy. I think his name was Mason. He ate him whole. I was like, oh my god, what is happening right now? It was like some cell from Dragon Ball Z type shit. He just ate the guy whole and he disappeared. It was crazy. I want to see if that happens in the games. That was freaking insane. But yeah, these Hiomas. They seem really interesting. And apparently they want to kill Alicia, who we know is a member of the royal family. So yeah. Lots of intrigue there, which is of course going to get addressed later in the game. So yeah, this is basically like probably the first hour of the game condensed in anime form. And I really, really enjoyed it. I actually thought it was going to be like a little side story that happened before the game. But no, this is pretty much the beginning of the game. And I liked it. 
makes me really hyped for the game. I want to see where this story goes. I'm picking it up day one. If you guys saw this, I want to know your thoughts on it. Were you disappointed because you thought it was going to be something else like me? Or did you end up really enjoying it? Leave your thoughts in the comments. I'd love to hear what you think. Thank you guys so much for watching and have a great day.